Hey everyone, Dan Gunther here. Welcome to my review of the fourth episode of The Mandalorian, titled Sanctuary. Having escaped Grief Karga and the rest of the bounty hunters in the previous episode, The Mandalorian and Baby Yoda find themselves on the run, looking for somewhere to hide out. The Mandalorian picks the planet Sorgan, which he calls a backwater scug hole, claiming that no one will be able to find them there. He sets down near a small settlement, discovering that an old acquaintance of his, Cara Dune, has taken up residence there, and she claims that uh, the planet is not big enough for the both of them, to borrow a western phrase. This is our first introduction to Cara Dune. She is a former drop soldier for the Rebellion and also a former shock trooper, according to the Mandalorian. Very much someone who is schooled in combat and warfare. The Mandalorian does decide to move on, but he is stopped by a pair of krill farmers who we saw at the beginning of the episode. Their village is being terrorized by a group of aliens, raiders who are stealing supplies from them and attacking their village regularly. In exchange for sanctuary there, the Mandalorian agrees to help them fight off their attackers. However, he also brings Cara Dune into the plan, paying her with the money that he got from the krill farmers. When they arrive at the farm, they do a bit of scouting and discover that the raiders have in their possession an ATST. You may remember these from the movie Return of the Jedi. Uh, in that movie, they didn't seem all that powerful. They were taken out by a bunch of Ewoks, but I guess maybe the Ewoks are more formidable warriors than they would appear to be because the appearance of this ATST seems to strike fear in the heart of the Mandalorian and Cara Dune, who claim that the farmers have no choice but to move on. However, the farmers are determined to stand their ground, and so Cara Dune and the Mandalorian train them in basic combat to become a small army and take on the ATST with Cara Dune and the Mandalorian at the lead. Throughout their stay at the farm, the baby Yoda is being taken care of by a family, uh, a, a widow and her daughter Winta. Now, the widow and the Mandalorian appear to be getting closer as time goes on. There's definite affection there, which is causing maybe the Mandalorian to kind of waver on his vows of uh, being a Mandalorian which uh, we learn in this episode involve him never taking off his helmet in the presence of another. He only takes it off in private for, you know, to eat and things like that. But in the presence of other people, he may never take it off. We also learn as he speaks to Cara Dune that the consequence for taking it off in the presence of another means that he can never put it back on. So taking it off while someone else is around would mean leaving behind his life as a Mandalorian claiming, of course, that this is the way. Once again, through the power of montage, the villagers learn to fight, and the time has come for the showdown between the raiders and the farmers. The Mandalorian and Cara Dune lure the ATST away from the encampment by destroying the main building in the encampment. I have to credit this episode for the imagery of the ATST crashing through the forest and chasing them down and facing off against the farm. The imagery is very striking and pretty scary. The ATST has this eerie red glow coming from inside the cockpit, and this definitely does seem to be a formidable and fearsome weapon. The plan is for the ATST to step into a large depression that has been dug uh, on the outskirts of the farm. Unfortunately, it stops itself just shy and attacks from that position. And it takes a bit of coaxing to kind of lure it forward and step into the hole. It eventually does. The Mandalorian throws what I'm assuming is a thermal detonator or something similar into the cockpit of the ATST, destroying it, which causes the attacking raiders to retreat. At this point, there's a rather significant time jump, and it's implied that the Mandalorian has remained in this village, in this farm, for a number of weeks. They talk about raising hell a few weeks back. And it seems as though the Mandalorian has kind of become accustomed to being around these people and definitely grown closer to this widow that I mentioned earlier. However, he recognizes that he must soon move on. And he does appear to be briefly tempted with the idea of staying and having her remove his helmet, thereby turning his back on his life as a bounty hunter, but ultimately decides to move on, but does ask her to care for the young Yoda creature uh, in her village, intending to leave him there. 
However, they are soon attacked by another bounty hunter who has tracked the baby Yoda to this farm. And the Mandalorian, realizing that they are not safe there, must once again go on the run with baby Yoda under his care. Uh, bidding farewell to the life that might have been. Now, the gunfighter and his posse kind of training an old west town to defend themselves against bandits or something like that is a bit of a trope in westerns, and it really fits in with this series that has, again, as I've said before, leaned hard into this whole western idea. And for the most part, it works pretty well. I have to say, this was probably at first my least favorite episode of the series so far but upon rewatching it i did come to uh, I, I did grow to really like it and what it's trying to say i guess i was kind of expecting more of an exploration of where this baby yoda came from and more of an exploration of the backstory of the mandalorian uh and I didn't recognize this at first, but we did in fact get a bit more exploration of the Mandalorian, specifically uh, his code and, and the code that he lives by, rather than the past and where he came from. So uh, we do learn, for example, that he has not removed his helmet in the presence of someone since he was a kid when he first put it on. So, you know, this is a thing that he has dedicated his life to and is very much a strong believer in. Cara Dune was an interesting character. I do like the introduction of more woman characters into the show. We've got her, we've got the widow, and we've got her child Winta, which is definitely uh, way more women than we've seen recently in the show. So definite improvement there. She definitely was brought on board for her fighting prowess. She is, of course, a UFC fighter. So uh, very well used in this, I think, uh, and, and a good person for this role. Of course, baby Yoda is as cute as ever. And there's, they really seem to be playing up these moments where he's just acting adorable and being really cute. Uh, I mean, the last couple of weeks have seen an explosion of memes online about baby Yoda and how freaking cute he is. Um, but in this episode, it almost seems as though the, the children of the village who look after baby Yoda and befriend him are almost a surrogate for the audience as they're, you know, awing and commenting on how cute he is and being really sad when he leaves and that sort of thing. So I really felt like they were, uh, leaning hard into that and they know how cute he is and and they're really playing that up and using that to their advantage so all in all i'd say an excellent episode maybe not my favorite so far that might be episode three i really enjoyed episode three but definitely this is a good continuation of the story but again at the end we're just kind of left with the same questions we had at the end of episode three where is he going to go how is he going to get away from all of these bounty hunters this felt a little bit like a side quest but uh, I'm definitely interested to see where it goes from here. Let me know your thoughts about this episode in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, and thanks, of course, to the Patreon supporters for their help in bringing these videos to you. I'll see you in the next episode, and I'll see you next week for an all-new episode of The Mandalorian. Take care, and until the next video, this is the way.